Good morning and welcome to Homes and Lifestyles Canada, where we talk about things from buying, selling, and decor. I'm Kim Hayden, veteran agent and your host. It's often said that the kitchen is the heart of the home. It's not just the utilitarian space where we cook and prepare our meals, but it's also the gathering place for the friends and family. It's where we start our day with breakfast, share our moment of happiness or sorrow over a cup of tea, or we create memories and traditions like learning grandma's recipe or baking cookies for the first time. Since the kitchen is so central to our home, it's important to have a good design. Today I'm joined with kitchen designer Michael Burr from Legacy Kitchens and lifestyle blogger Mickey Sutherland, who will share their thoughts on designing the perfect kitchen. But before we start, let's check out one of our open house tours. Welcome back. We're going to find out what makes the perfect kitchen. But first, let's meet our guests. For over 30 years, Legacy Family of Companies has been one of North America's premier kitchen designers and suppliers. I'm joined with kitchen designer Michael Burr. Hi, Kim. Thanks uh, for having me. My pleasure. I love your accent. <laughs> <laughs> also with us today is lifestyle blogger and mother, Mickey Sutherland of Center Street Style. That's a great name. Thank you. I love Mickey. Mickey, oh, Mickey, you're so fine. I'm sure I you've get heard that, that before. Lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some key elements to designing the kitchen? We're going to we're gonna start with Mickey Ladies first. Oh, thank what, you. If you. You know, designing a kitchen, what is uh, one thing that you must have in there? I would say, especially now more than ever with kids, is a big island. So they can come up, they can help cook, they can help wash dishes, cookies, prepping, everything. It's a must have. And you, Michael? I'm all about the function. You can make kitchens look pretty. That's quite easy, but it has to function. Think about what you have, where's it going to go, so you can work in that kitchen and, and bake and cook and get everything that you need quickly and easily. What's the one magical thing we can do in the kitchen to maximize our space when we don't have space? Drawers, just so you can get access to everything. You want to open a drawer, put your hand in, grab what you want, and off and go. Everybody's busy and working in the kitchen. If you've got kids, they need their food quick. You've got friends and family over. You don't want to spend all your time preparing get access to stuff. To get access to stuff. I notice more drawers now as opposed to doors. Used to be everything was doors and things to get lost in the back. Get out on your hands and knees, get the kids to get stuff out the back. <laughs> Don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> it's all about function nowadays. So, you know, Michael, if there is only one feature that we could choose to splurge on, what would it be? Well, I would really like to do one of those Sub-Zero integrated fridges with the, the nice panels. You don't even know that it's a fridge. It just fits in it oh, like a pantry. Yes. Uh, they're just gorgeous. Um, fits in with the, the style. And that would make a smaller kitchen because we're seeing more and more people going into smaller spaces. That would make a smaller kitchen appear larger, eh? Absolutely does. Everything's integrated. And it, I mean, they look beautiful. They're built in. They're integrated. It doesn't look like a fridge. Anybody else aside from Sub-Zero does the uh, paneled fridge fronts? Miele, the European brand, uh, okay. they do the panel fronts as well, yes. Awesome. What's the one thing you you would splurge on if your husband oh, would let you? Oh my gosh, my <laughs> splurge would be the Miele uh, built-in coffee espresso machine. Oh yes. As oh, a yes. mom, I just think it would pay for itself probably in a couple of months time. <laughs> and you would get your coffee pot off the countertop for get that out of the way. That oh, is absolutely yes, the yes. one thing I would splurge so on. So it would be the the coffee express slash sanity saver. <laughs> exactly. Excellent, excellent. So Michael, what are the elements like when we're looking at a kitchen design? What are the elements that designate this is a good design, this is not? So it depends if you're looking at the function or the style, and I like to separate the two because you want to talk to a, a potential homeowner about what do they like, what's the style, what fits and flows in their house. And then I'm always working about how many people are in the kitchen, how many people are cooking, do you entertain a lot? Uh, and then I've got to design the kitchen around their specific needs. Um, islands are great if they have a lot of people over and they put their buffet out over the counter and uh, good access to that, good flow around the kitchen. Uh, so it's a question and answer, and then I have to come up with the perfect space based on their specific needs. Excellent. What's the one thing that you can't live without in your kitchen? Oh, gosh. Uh, big Island is a must. Um, that would probably be the number one thing. I'm also really liking, as Michael said earlier, pull out drawers. I can send the kids, put all their Tupperware in there, go get mommy a cup, go get mommy a plate for dinner. 
It's easy, it's all <laughs> contained, it doesn't spill out when you open the doors. Drawers are must. Isn't that amazing how that go get mommy this just yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Yours are only three. I know. Three, what, you said, how old are they? Again? Actually, only two, two and, and six three, months. Six months. So you're training I'm them I'm starting young. them young. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, you know, as we shift through our lives, you know, from single couple, from a single to couples to people with kids, you know, and taken into to the design of the kitchen. So from a mom's point of view, is there something that you wouldn't, that you have had to change in your kitchen? from when you were single? Like, what oh, are some that's of the... such a good question. Um, Pre-kids, I entertained a lot. We did big parties, we did cocktails, dinners, and now with kids, that's settled down, and I do see the functionality uh, a lot differently than I did back then. Um, things like, it was fine in our old kitchen to have the sink off to the side, because we didn't have kids to kind of keep my eye on. Now we just moved into a new place with the sink in the island and it's nice being able to look out over the rest of the kitchen to keep my eyes on the kids while I'm still prepping dinner, washing dishes, cooking. It does change, there's definitely a change. Absolutely, what are some trends that you see from, you know, from our single family homes to maybe seniors to everything in between? Do you see different needs? With I, different I would stages? say it's, it's really down more to the, the personal attributes of somebody. Um, you get the people that entertain, you get the people that just love to cook. And spices, I mean, I generally when I go to somebody's house and I say, open up some of your drawers, I wanna see what's in your cupboards, and you'll get that client that has 50 different bottles of spices and it's so important to them. So now I have to find a solution for that. It's gotta be in the right location and I, I gotta make sure like a, a nice pull out spice cabinet, they can reach what they want right beside the cooktop and, and work from there. So it's very personal. So tell me a little something about the pull out microwaves. I'm seeing more and more of these because people are the going drawers? back. Yeah, the pull out drawers yes. for the microwave. Oh, have you I seen those? Seen oh, that. Well, because people are taking back, they're reclaiming the hood fan. Yes, that's right. Because right. yeah. that's where you make yes. a feature with the hood fan. And you get a nice big backsplash chimney style hood or a nice decorative wood hood. So microwaves now, you don't want them to be seen. They're not the prettiest of things. So this microwave drawer goes under the counter. It's like those, um, I'm too young for these, but those turntables, you could press the button and it'll come out of the hi-fi system. Yes. And you put your record on. Microwaves work the same way. Press the button, the drawer same. comes out, put your tea in. Off it goes. They're, they're pretty cool. They're incredible. I've seen yes. a couple of those and it's like, oh, I think I want one of those. <laughs> Comes with right. redesigning the entire kitchen, wow. of course. Come and see me. <laughs> Details. <laughs> Details. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Details. <laughs> Just a little bit of money, right? Uh, what are some design elements you think are classic and maybe some that, you know, never go out of style? I'm going to mm -hmm. Actually, Michael, we'll start with you. You're yeah. the design expert. Here. Shaker kitchen doors have been around forever. Yes. But what you can do with that shaker door is you can make it look more modern. And it really depends on what you do with your hardware, your countertop, your flooring, and particularly your backsplash tile. And the beauty of doing the shaker door is you can go fairly modern, get a bit older, you've been in the house 20 years, and you think, I just want to refresh, change your hardware, change your backsplash tile. You can go a little bit more classical, but you don't have to change yep. your cabinets. So uh, shaker door you can work with. We call it transitional in design, and it's something that you can just work with. Been around a long time, and it's a, it's a really good safe bet. What's the, what's your favorite style? What's oh the gosh, you... I would say I'm slightly traditionalist, more traditional than probably most of the trend of my age group, um, but traditional contemporary. I like a little bit of mix of everything in there. I just like it clean. <laughs> and that's what I get Three all the time. Three kids and a dishwasher, yeah. and I still go, really? <laughs> really? One of the most common things I get for somebody is, I just want it to be easy to clean. It's got to be maintenance free. And the, the trouble people have there is the cleanest is a flat slab door, yep. but it's a very contemporary modern look. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find a, a look that will work, that's easy maintenance, but maybe, and we're in Calgary, we're a little bit more conservative maybe yep. than Vancouver and Toronto. So you've got to find a product that's going to be easy to maintain, but not too modern. So again, a shaker door, it fits the bill. Shaker door, shaker yeah, door. That's what we know now, yeah. shaker door. Shake your door. <laughs> um, so is there anything that, that you would steer people away from if they were designing a kitchen um, that maybe has been in, in trend in past that, that just really isn't progressing forward? 
Well, for me in trend right now, bold colors. So I'm hearing people asking for navy blues and you know, it, it looks quite stunning. I know some of the new home builders now are doing blue within their kitchens. My question to somebody is, are you gonna love that as much in six months time of coming down to breakfast? Is it gonna look as stunning? And are you gonna be in love with it? Are you gonna be able to live with this for the next 10 years? So I'd caution people about some of these strong colors. So is there anything that you've, like, have you painted a color or done something in your kitchen that six no, months later? No, but so. I'm really drawn to the colored kitchens now, that kind of gray that's going on over top yeah. of the white. And it would be something if I was doing a kitchen that I would be more drawn to. But again, in five years time, I might be kicking myself for not sticking with something traditional like white. Well, down in Mackenzie Town a decade ago, um, both Cedar Glen and Jamin had all their show homes and they both had this navy blue or, or country blue stained maple. Yes. I think that only lasted one season and I, and yet a ton of people put it in and then they had to rip it out. And I think for a new home builder, that they can appeal at those trend levels. Yeah. If you're renovating your kitchen, you just need to think a little bit different because you know you generally you're going to be there a lot longer. Yes. And, and so just watch those strong colors. Off-white colors, been around forever, good safe bet, and maybe add some color. So do a darker island, do some darker sections of I cabinet. I love nice. that, I love that. The white on the wall, so it opens visually with the darker island, so it almost feels like it's furniture. That's where yes. it's at right now. That's the biggest I, trend that I'm seeing, that. and introducing that mix of, of dark and white. It's a beautiful look, but yeah. you're not going too far, so you're saving yourself being a little bit safer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mickey, you have a background in fashion and uh, makeup artistry. So have, do you incorporate that into your kitchen space and what's safe from the kids and, and, and not safe from the kids? Yeah, I think having a fashion background, it does drive me to want more of that pretty look on top of um, everything being practical. And so easy ways to play with it in the kitchen, I find, are the backsplash because it isn't too expensive. If you go with something trendy and have to rip it out. And countertops are also a must because they're visually right there. And having kids, I find, I would love Carrera marble throughout the whole scheme. Don't but do with it. kids, absolutely not. It's just so <laughs> impractical. Something like granite makes more sense. Caesar stone, something durable. But yeah, it has to be pretty for me. I, I do bring that in. Absolutely. Um, and so you you share all this through your blog I also, do, right? Yes. Awesome. And we get to follow you, and I get to go. Oh, thank God, I don't have little kids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you mentioned in your blog that um, you never you've never met a cupcake that you don't like. Now I'm kind of with you. I love to bake. Right. I love to bake. What's your favorite cupcake? Oh my gosh, red velvet with cream cheese frosting. Oh, awesome, awesome. What's yours? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm a pumpkin spice oh, with the cream cheese. I, I always end up going back that route, but it's the time of year for the triple chocolate cupcakes with the peppermint cream mm. cheese frosting. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's a reason my husband can't lose that last 30 pounds. <laughs> so, um, you know, Michael, you cook. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know how to implement what you're designing. What's your favorite meal to cook? Oh, I, I'm fairly simple. I just love a pasta. Uh, very simple, quick and easy. I'm a busy guy, so uh, just rushing up a quick pasta is ideal for me. And there's not the a big mess with pasta? There isn't. It's nice and simple. I have a home office, so I can work in the home office, prepare a meal, and then get straight back to work. And that, that works for me on a busy lifestyle. <laughs> absolutely, I understand the busy lifestyle, absolutely. So with more and more people wanting to stay connected uh, through apps and social media and turning to uh, videos for cooking lessons and stuff, are we seeing anything in the kitchens? Like what are you seeing trend-wise for integration of technology into our kitchens? Come on. I, I I want to bring something out here which is a little bit selfish for me, but it really helps when people are doing the design with me on a kitchen, and that's VR technology. And so VR technology is where you wear one of those headsets and you enter the virtual world. And so now we design a kitchen in the virtual world. We can have the kitchen layout, integrate the textures of the doors, the floor, the backsplash, the counters, and say, this is what I'm going to create for you. And people can literally 
walk through their kitchen virtually. It's incredible. And it just so helps people with those. They get so concerned that they're making decisions from small samples, and now they get to see how this is going to look and we can That's make changes. That's cool. Wow. That, that is, is very cool. Amazing. Technology is just helping people. They do it from the it. safety of a seat, correct? Uh, actually, it's, get them it's up? incredible to see because you stood up and you, you <laughs> feel like you're floating in your kitchen and you're talking to somebody and, you know, they're kind of pointing to this wall upper up here and the fridge and, and actually they're painting, they're just looking at bare walls. It's a hilarious to watch, but they are immersed in their kitchen. You're going to have to record one of wow. them. That, that would be awesome. It is funny. That it would funny. be awesome. But that's how technology is helping in the planning stage of kitchens, let alone when you actually get to all these connected appliances that you have now. Speaking of connected appliances, so how are we seeing, like, um, are, you, are we putting more kind of USB outlets in kitchens? Like, what are we doing to accommodate, you know, having your, your, laptop or your your tablet in the kitchen to well, follow no, a nobody's doing a desk so nobody has an area where they sit now yeah. where they have a computer because everybody's using tablets they're using their phones so they're sat at the island or they're sat at the peninsula so you take your, your yeah. tablet to wherever you're going so yeah there's usb outlets for charging stations now all these things that, yes. that we're putting in just to make it easy for people yeah. yeah, no, I, I, it's the, it's always going, okay, I don't know why it is, but the one thing I can never remember is how long to boil my potatoes for perfect mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. I, can, <laughs> I can bake bread from scratch, I can do all sorts of things, but for some reason, it's every time I decide I want homemade mashed potatoes well, that I have to Google actually Google Home that now, up. come up with this little tiny device, and then you can just say, Google, set me a timer for my egg, and it will just set a timer, and it will tell you when it's done. You can ask Google for a recipe, just a little speaker, stick it on the counter. Technology is going crazy. Oh, that's wow. awesome. Hands-free. Hands-free. Just, just say. When Google can actually make my dinner. That's, <laughs> that's when we're talking. <laughs> so what are some changes that we're seeing in the kitchen, um, you know, in renovation purposes? The corner pantry. There are so okay. many yes. homes that have a corner pantry, and quite often I'll say to somebody, you know, you should get rid of that pantry, and there's this look of horror on their face <laughs> that I'm some kind of crazy designer. But the reality is, and I say to people, go and walk inside, shut the door, stick your arms out, turn around in a circle, there's nothing there, it's dead space. And you've lost that from your kitchen, and then you look at a kitchen with a corner pantry, and you've got cabinets, a corner pantry, more cabinets, and it becomes sectional. Get rid of that pantry, now you have more countertops, we do a cabinet pantry, which you're using all the space for storage with roll-out shelves, etc. Uh, and it just transforms that kitchen. You're not doing anything major as a renovation, but you take out that pantry, the space looks bigger, it's far more functional, it, it's killer, it looks fantastic. Interesting, so. interesting, yeah, because every, every home I see in Mackenzie Town or in that area, Every single one. From a builder's pantry. point of view, it's a little bit more framing, it's a little bit more drywall and a door. So it's cheap for a builder to do a corner pantry. Less cabinetry, but less function. But people don't oh, appreciate that because they, you, know, okay. you walk in, you've got shallow depth shelves. So get rid of that pantry and it makes a tremendous difference. Okay, well. now I'm seeing the reasoning behind my husband's best friend. They bought this house and that's the first thing he did was he gutted that entire pantry. He took it out and I'm going, what are you doing taking out your pantry? Where are you going to stick the crock pot? Because yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of crock pot. So where do you stick the crock pot? In a pot? deep drawer. We can make deep drawers. Everything has to have a home. So I always get people, do an audit of everything you have in your current kitchen. Let's make sure it all has a home in the new kitchen design. The last thing you want to do is have a new kitchen, you're putting stuff away, and then you have that crock pot, and you're like, where does this go? Okay, we, so we think about it, got, think it through. I got a challenge for you, Michael. Okay. You're gonna figure out how to take my my kitchen that has been in a 3,000, like total 3,000, it's not like the all on the 3,000 square foot kitchen? Yeah, no, <laughs> <I wish. laughs> But it's the family, and yeah. we're downsizing. Mm -hmm. And there's some things I don't want to get rid of. I don't want to get rid of all my chafing dishes and things like that because I do a lot of entertaining. I will give up my my dining room and my uh, half of my living room just so I can have that space in the kitchen because that's where we all end up going, right? The this is why it's collaborative. It has to have both sides. I've got all the tools, but you know what you have. Unless I'm coming to your house and I'm going through all your cupboards. So you have to help me a little bit, but let me know. So you, what do you have? You feel I'll find something. You're confident, eh? I'm very confident, yes. Well, I'd like to thank both Mickey and Michael. And I'm 
I think I, we couldn't have asked for better panel guests because your names even go to galleries. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome for uh, chatting with us today and just uh, you know giving us kind of some insight from you know generational and also from everything that whole overview as to what legacy is doing and what you can provide so mickey as a blogger where can we find you you can find me over on uh, my website www.centerstreetstyle.com as well as um, on instagram and twitter at the same handles what's nice is you're a calgary girl so it, right. everything is very very applicable here to calgary exactly and to all of our viewers yeah Excellent. all local and yeah, Excellent. Sourced. Where can we find you, Michael? Uh, through Legacy Kitchens. So go to our website, legacykitchens.com. Again, we're a local company, been in Calgary over 30 years. Uh, there's 12 designers there, so just go to our website. You'll find me on the website and can contact me through there. And again, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. You'll, you'll find us. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you.